And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. First there was Formula Day, then there was Formula D. Uh, kind of a 2.0 version of Formula Day, same game basically. Tons of maps out, but they started introducing new maps. I don't normally talk about the maps from Formula D. Today I'm going to be talking about the Docks slash Singapore. Now there's a, some interesting features of this, and this won't be a long review. So we'll get into it in just a second. I just want to mention that this is possibly my favorite racetrack I've ever raced on in Formula D, Formula Day, what have you. Really good one. So take that as you will. Why do I think it's so cool? Wait till you see the board. That's just going to convince you right there. Okay, here's one side of the board, which is the docks. Okay, now this enough for me. This side of the board itself is, an, is reason enough for me to want to get this. When I looked at this, I was just fascinated by this huge area. It looks like Tiananmen Square, just totally paved out there. Uh, and the fact that there's different lanes racing around. Now, there's different ways that you can race the race. Uh, you can start with all your cars lined up like I have them there. And when the race gets going, we are going to race around here through here, up here, around here, over here, like this, and around back to the finish line. The three lap race, it's kind of difficult to do one lap races with this board, although it's quite feasible if you want to. You can also start everybody so that they are lined up on these alternate routes so that we have them all here. And once we say go, they all go, and you basically have to go on all three routes, and it's up to you which route you take in which order. Now, if you notice, there's only one pit stop area. It's on that route. So it might not be advantageous for you to go straight here or to go down the center one because the center one is going to come out there unless, of course, you're going to push that center one. And I love this because there's a couple reasons I like it. One, because it's not so easy to t tell. In, in Formula D, if you fall far behind, it can be a bit frustrating because you really have to push yourself to catch up and it you know, just can be discouraging. But here you're never really sure if you're behind because you're on a different lap than everybody else. You might be behind the guy racing you, but you still might be in second place on the whole thing. So this is the whole way that the, this track is. There's a few special things if you notice over here. There is an oil slick, so you got to be careful not to land in that one. Over here, there are some containers. And when you're coming down here, you better make sure you don't hit those because that's obstacles in the middle of the course. And as you can see in the middle section, there's two different air, uh, places that you can go. All in all, it's a really cool track, and it's one that I really especially like for beginners. The other track here is Singapore, which is a very dark background at night. Very pretty. I very much like how this track is set up, and it has a pile of curves. In fact, there's very few straightaways on this track. So it's hard to really get going, but it's nothing is too terribly difficult except maybe this, this dreadful three stop turn here. So you'll find that I don't know that you'll ever use sixth gear in this race and you won't be using uh, fifth gear even that much often, although there is that straightaway right there. For the most part, this is a medium track and I have to say that if this was the only track put in the game, I would still play it, of course, but I wouldn't be absolutely keen on, you know, saying, wow, this is the greatest game ever. But ladies and gentlemen, that other track is just so much fun. In fact, I have liked this track so well, and the Singapore track, you know, is good enough that this track has actually replaced the track that, you know, you can only keep one track in the box, which is unfortunate. I wish you could keep more. Uh, but you can only keep one track in the box, and so this is the track that I keep in a box just because it's so cool. And even though that looks convoluted and complexing, it's not. Uh, it still has the same great artwork, you know, where you actually feel like you're looking down at a docks area and the Singapore side of the board is just as nice. But man, it's just so neat to be able to crisscross here, switch gears. You can do all kinds of cool things with this track. And an oil slick doesn't help, hurt. Just, it's fun. And that's what the games are about. It's fun. So, major thumbs up for this track. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.